What's going on everyone, it's Luke here again, bringing you, you another awesome video, hopefully. <laughs> okay, so this is going to be a very quick video. It is basically going to show you the BuyBot Pro update uh, that has come out today. And you can see it's basically like a competitor analysis thing. Uh, it appears down here. So you can see it here. And obviously you can't see quite this one second why you can't see anything obviously I haven't typed in the information but I'm going to show you why it's important in two ways okay so I have the reason I've gone on and picked this item is that I've tried to pick an item that has a bit of um sort of an up and down the items that are very very um sort of stuck on basically the, the items that have a very static uh, fluid buy box, which is sort of the same all the time, isn't gonna be isn't gonna be as important for that sort of product because if you see a product that has basically a completely straight line here and the number of sellers does go up and down, but not really nothing like this, then you're gonna know before you buy it that the ice you know if it was at twenty seven eighteen pretty much the whole of this three months, you would know. That whatever you're buying it at, you're probably going to have to sell that product at the 2719. So this sort of thing is not as important. Yes, it's still nice to see because if you can see that everyone only has a couple in, you know, if you can see, for example, I'll just type in a number here so we can actually just see what it what it looks like. Um, so obviously I'm going to I just put it in ten pound just for the minute. It, you sort of can ignore half of it. It's just so we can see with this. Yeah. So it's now popped up like this. Okay. So obviously seller position one two three four five. Now if you go up here, uh, where's that seller? Uh, here we are. So you can't see the. So sometimes it will say like the number of the number in stock, six in stock, nine in stock, whatever. Uh, and what I've actually done is I went onto an item that I'm selling and quickly checked that because I could see that the seller that was in the buy box or my test one I've just done well said six in stock. So where are you at? Sometimes it says the number, sometimes it doesn't. And it did say on here six, and then I looked at the one that I was selling, how many I had in stock. I then went onto my inventory and just double checked that the number that Amazon is saying I had was the number that this said, and it was. So, and then there was only one other guy that I could, uh, below me, and I couldn't see. They didn't really, yeah, I couldn't figure out what that actually would have been apart from looking at this. Yeah, so you can see here it shows you the the name of the seller, um, and obviously the position. You're not, you know, what some of that means, uh, and then the prices. Yeah. So two ways you can use this. You could you could look to buy an item, um, and it's very 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 static here. But you might look at it and be like, oh, actually, uh, imagine that sixteen was like three. Okay, so the top sort of five sellers, there's only about twelve units in stock. Now, if you look at this product, it's um, you can sort of see that twelve units should sell not instantly but not it which shouldn't take too long to actually sell so you may look at it and if you if you're looking at a product and you know that there's not many left in stock say that it is a disney product but it says only five left in stock because they've all sold out or whatever item it may be because obviously you sort of you know when you go to buy stuff uh, sometimes it's just exclusive to one one store and it will sell out because everyone will buy it and, and that's what sort of how it works yeah and you might think you know what if i can get this in quick enough maybe i'll and they sell over the next couple of days so i get it on, in over the next couple of days i can probably make a little premium on top because yeah because but because you can see that they will probably sell those out by the time you if you quickly get it in you can make that little cream or whatever you want to call it on the top and worst case it will just other people will get it in, or maybe your, your stock's held up because the prep center it goes to is just not one of those good prep centers, or prep centers, you know what I'm trying to say, fulfillment centers where it takes sometimes ages, sometimes they go in there real quick and sometimes they don't. Then you know you're still gonna be fall back onto that. So that's one thing you can do. You can basically look to see if you can, if you get a product in fast, can you make a little extra because the current situation is actually uh, that a lot of people may sell out really quickly. Now this, so that is one aspect that you can take from this, but the one I really think is going to be great for us because that basically this used to be this isn't an, a new thing. This actually is like an old thing which is now an like a re mock and Basically, we used to be able to have um, something similar about a year, two years, two years ago probably. And then some, Amazon changed they ch Amazon changed the stuff all the time. They're the way that you can what date you can get, and basically this disappeared, and and then no one could actually see 
what stock people had. So you used to be able to see it ages ago. I mean, this is years. You used to actually be able to see this information. And obviously, there's a way that, you know, there must be a rat way. There's always a new way to get the same stuff, you know, like anything. You just tweak this, tweak that, and then you can sort of come out the same data. Now, this is what is going to be great. This is exactly, this this example, this Disney Moana singing doll is a perfect example for what this will be used for. Uh, and it will enhance your buying decision like tenfold. So everyone will know that Disney products are, when when the Disney have a sale and it's three for two, uh, I don't know, half price, whatever it is, yeah? Everybody buys Disney stuff. Now, in the way you can see is that there is currently eight sellers on this product. Look how many sellers there were at one point. 42 sellers, yeah? And if you go historically, okay, you can't see historically. It would be nice if we could just find like a, another product. Uh, just because basically, we, we see with, you'll see with Disney dolls that they go up and down sellers. I'll just try this one. This is an old seller that used to be on the website. This is a common place with Disney products, yeah? So if you're new to Amazon, you might think, oh, it's only a you know, low. But if you... If you're an experienced seller, you'll already you'll look at that straight away without even really having to pay attention and know what sort of product this is. Um, everyone goes and buys it because it's the. It just seems very. You know that Disney's will sell. It's a well-known brand. Kids love it. Christmas, to, you know, there's no. You don't really. If you had to say one brand, now let's have a look at this. This is an old item, so I don't think Disney sell it anymore. But if you go to a year, well, you can see. If you go to all, actually, it might help. Okay, it's not quite as bad as that. You see, you see what this item used to be like, though, when it was selling like hotcakes, sixteen pound forty. But then it obviously was selling for thirty pound here. You see, it literally halved its price. So if people that are buying these items can get caught out. Now, what the great thing is is that you might look at this and be like, "Do I buy the item?" So say that it's now up here, thirty. So you've ba you, you you you're holding out. Let's say you're holding out. Let's say you bought it down here at twenty because it was selling at twenty five quid, twenty six quid, and at one point it went down to twenty three. But even there, twenty two. So it yeah, it hasn't dropped massive, but it but you know that could be your whole margin. That could be your whole profit, five quid or whatever the difference is there. If you're sourcing it for say ten or fifteen or twelve, so you might have it here. Uh, and so as this goes up, you can see this is probably when the sale started for the product or around here. And now more and more people are getting it into Amazon. Um, and the reason it goes like this is because a lot of people send it to a prep center or they send, you know, and, and different people take different amounts of time to get the products in. So it's a steady increase as the products book into Amazon. So they won't, this won't register on here until the products book into Amazon. So people have already bought the product, sent it to a prep center, have done it themselves at home, whatever the situation is. And then up here, there's base. There's no more. There's no more. No one else has got to book any products in apart from obviously that one. That could be like yeah, whatever. But you can see here, this is the peak. Now you may be sitting here like, oh god, like there's no money left in this. Yeah, there's no money left in this. Like, do I just sell it at like a break even and then look for other products? I've learned my lesson. Now I understand what this what this is as a how how to read this sort of product. All this is what you can do. So. Imagine this analysis is actually where we are up here. Let's just say, I know it's yeah. Let's just let's just use it. It's, it's not. It's not. It's just to give a to, to get my point across. Yeah. So you can see all these numbers. Now, if you could not see these numbers, this is you know you don't know the numbers. You're looking here and you're like, I have no idea how many units these forty people have. I have let's say you have ten or yeah. So you do think, you know what, I'll sell off six at break even and four I'll leave in stock. Sometimes I do that sort of tactic. Uh, I, sort of, I sort of get my money back. Uh, it's definitely a sort of like Q4. I'll get my money back because I can reinvest so much, you know, so fast that you're going to you're gonna have those items where you just, uh, you realise you've made a mistake or you, it's taken too long. But because you don't know the stock number, there could be 4,000 units of this item there. It could be 100 units. Each person could only have four because maybe Disney said maximum four quantities per, per purchase. Uh, maybe someone's got it from somewhere else. You know, like you don't really know. So you, you can 
do two things. So you can now combine, you can either, so you, at Christmas obviously this isn't 100% accurate, the number of sales, because it's sort of, this is, yeah, it's hard to say. But where it says 23 in December, it's probably more like 100. Just because the rankings on the product, everything sells just so much more quantity um, across the whole board. So it, it, it look, the average, it, uh, the number of sales percentage wise against each item is sort of the same against each other. It's just, oh, it's hard to explain really. So that, anyway, the 23, that says 100. Um, but throughout the rest of the year, it's very, very, you can say 14th of August is probably, you know, it might be a bit higher, might be a bit less, but you can get a rough gauge. I would always go, depending on the item, I would, always, I would use a combination of the monthly sales here, and I would look back and I would sort of read this a bit, you know, the way I read it is a little spike here, a little, each dip is about, is about sale, but it also represents up to a, a handful of sales at once. Um, the lower the rank, the smaller the dip will be going downwards. So that is probably only just one sale, that, that massive spike. But when you start doing these, you know, why has it only gone down from 30 to 22 and this has gone down from 30 to 12? Yeah, so there's probably a handful of sales in that because it's double, it's double dropped. It's only it's gone down double, you know, an extra ten thousand in ranking. So you can sort of count these and, and have an approximation yourself. Use it with a combination of this, and you can come out. Let's say you come out with, I think, what are we in now? January. That's just use. Uh, it's a shame you can't use. That's just use September as January. Yeah, so there's twenty. So I'll also look back to. Um, oh, you can't see September. Let's just use October then. 21. So October, I'll, I know that's not going back as far, but I'll have a look and I'll roughly count myself. I'll go, mm, da, 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 da. I'll think, okay, um, I think it's probably, maybe it's not 21, it's, I believe it's 18 or 25. Yeah, but it's, 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 it'll be around that sort of figure. Not too much higher, too much lower. So let's say we're going to use the, un, we're going to underestimate on purpose. So we're going to have almost like a worst case scenario. Let's say it's not selling 21, it's selling 15. So like, that's a worst case because everything needs to be slower to sell, yeah? So this is what you'd do. Well, okay, I've got that 10 stock up here. What do I do? Well, let's say you can now come to here. Oh, that person doesn't have 200 in stock because, you know, you have no idea what they have before now. Um, I didn't realise this guy only has one. This guy has two. This guy's got one. So your 10 may be, let's say it's a 12, right all the way down here. But if this is selling 15 to 20 a month, as we sort of suggested, well, let's say it's selling 20. Well, actually, it's going to, it'll only take a month and a half for it to get down here or something, yeah? So you can put a time frame on the product now. I don't know why it's not clicking off. Well, so you, I can now give, give, at least provide a rough estimate, estimation on this product. So I can be like, okay, well, actually, it's not going to take me three months to sell this item. It might only take me seven and a half weeks. You, you know, you, you can get probably roughly down to the week, maybe to the two weeks. Uh, and then what you could do is, uh, okay, well, let's do a test. You know, I'm, I'm not going to do it now because you have to compare it against different days. Let's write these down. So, you know, yeah, it's not going to be, it's not like a fun thing to do, but it's interesting to, to just, just, just to see how accurate things are. So you would say seven weeks to sell, to get to you, and you're down at number seller, number eight, let's say, uh, or let's say seven, just so it looks a bit more. So about 25 will sell um, from one to six or whatever that number is. And then I'm number seven. So let's say that takes... Well, a month's about 15 to 18 to 20, so it's going to take over a month, it's going to take six weeks, let's just say six weeks. Okay, so if six weeks, it's going to sell 25, so 25 divided by six, it's selling 4.16 per week, that's round it up, well, round it up or down up to you, it depends if you want to be optimistic or if you want to be a bit more reserved, let's say instead of 4.16, it's four a week, yeah, uh, obviously ignore December because it's an anomaly, December's an anomaly month, sales, it's very difficult to get the correct data, but throughout the year, consistently, it will fluctuate, but it will be a bit more stable, and the data you can probably take with a bit more, like, uh, certainty, you can be basically a bit more certain that the data is more 
representation of that current period rather than Christmas. You know, for example, Christmas, it might say 30 on here because it's, it's analyzing the other months and I could do 30 in an hour. You know, it, it does happen. Like I've had it where I sold some chocolates at Christmas and it's selling like 45 a month uh, to, to me and someone else in the buy box. And it was, you know, I sold 15 in an hour or 20 in an you know, it just, So apart from the Christmas period, but the rest of the year, you can sort of go off this data. A uh, very sort of very much strong. You can you can take it with a some reassurance or whatever you want to sort of say. So you can now say that it's four a week. That's okay. So you can now work out how long it might take until you're selling your items. Yeah. As long as you can see, you know, as you can see here, it's going down. So people are selling out, but it's not actually going back up. So if you see this going up and down, well, then you've got to be a bit more careful and realize, hang on. Uh, the product's still probably on sale somewhere, and that's why it's going back up. So obviously that that, that would then take you longer to get down to here. But if you can see here, it's gone. Yeah, this is a very very easy and obvious. It's been a sale. Disney, everyone's gone mental because it's been on deal sheets or whatever. <laughs> then it's just gone down because it's Christmas. Yeah, and now it's here. And it yeah, it went up the tiniest bit there. Maybe someone found two that he left on the side, or a delivery was held up, or whatever. But yeah, it's it's, it's very very it, the trend is very readable. I guess you can say you can read this really easy. But now that you know it's it's that you could do a, a test and say, okay, there's four, there's four weeks. So what day is it today? Monday. Okay, so on Sunday night at you know eleven o'clock at night, I'm going to come back and I'm going to look at I'm going to write. You know, it's just a test. You don't have to do it every time. You could just do it on a couple of items just to see the reliability of this this thing. You could do sixteen one. You could just write all these down, write the names roughly, all the initials, just if it's easier, and then come back and be like, oh, it wasn't four a week. It was eight this week, yeah. And then you can revise your your numbers, and you know, yeah, you could get a virtual assistant to this, for example. You don't have to do all these sort of admin, whatever you want to call it. These little bits, little like things that are just like really tedious, you know. It, it doesn't take very long to do a video on this. Well, I've done a video on it now. Um, and then go away and explain it to a virtual assistant and they could do it. And you could, you know, you could provide them a, a list of uh, products that you are unsure about. They could even go and find the products. They could go and find the slow moving stock. There's loads of reports, there's things that pop up on everywhere on the Seller Central. Um, and then they could go over these and then provide you back a report of how long it's going to take you. Because you could be like, okay, can you, it could be every week, no, every month, I say, slow moving stock. Then you make a decision, do you uh, like sell off at cost? Meaning you just make him, you don't make any money, but that's okay. Sometimes you got to just, there'll be products that you buy and you realize that something wasn't, you know, you couldn't read the data properly or whatever. Uh, but you get what I'm trying to say. This, this now will give you that like, like a, a little, almost like after purchase uh, insurance in a way. Because you can now don't have to like take a pun in the dark. Do I, you know, because it's unknown before. You, you have no idea. But now you can actually um, like you can you can do like scenario, the scenario planning on your inventory is now very accurate because you can you can accurately figure out the plan of action for all of your items. Or before you had to basically guess if it was worth holding on to your items or maybe dropping it a little bit or maybe going to cost or maybe even trying to just get it out. I mean, this would be great for long-term storage fees, right? Because people are like, oh my God, I need to sell my stock, but I got all this, you know, I'm going to have a massive bill. What do I do? Do I just, do I recall it and wait? Do I, will it sell before? Because it's long-term storage fees is what, Feb next month or something? And this will you know if this is if this said one three two seven eight you could be number 10 on the list but only going to take you two weeks and you'll be able to sell your items um so there's there's many things that you can use this for and obviously on first glance you might not think that there's all of these different things that you can use this for but there is there's so you know and i could probably you know these things have just come off the top of my head I don't prepare these videos. I literally just go on to. The, <laughs> I should. I think I prepared one video, which is like the prep center versus uh, self prep. That's the only one I've actually well, I've done a bit of work before. The rest, I basically just go and see what happens. But you know, I'm sure that if I spent more time looking at this and 
daydreaming, I guess, figuring out what I could figure out. More would appear, more would appear, more would appear. And there'd be, there'd be so many more things. And those three things I've just given you were like, you know, golden nuggets in terms of like, not the information because it's anyone can figure it out, but the now they're like golden nuggets for you to implement in your business. You can now use these three extras, which you could never use before. Um, and yet the main thing will be when it's something like this and you want to know how long until you roughly are able to sell that product. Because in my mind, a three month turnaround is, is about right. It could take six months. It could, you know, it just depends on your cash flow. It depends on many variables. Everyone asks the question, what's the best? There is not really a best. Uh, if you've got, you know, a hundred grand, you could wait a year and sell all that, all the Lego that you've bought is now discontinued and you're selling it three times what you were selling it, uh, what you could have sold it for, but because you could hold out for so long, because you can keep buying stock, yeah? And and this will be a really nice way to basically infantry plan and manage, which you couldn't do before. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and just a couple of those things you will just think, you know what, actually, that's quite cool. I can use it for that. Uh, and you might not even want to use it for all of the reasons I've got, but I'm hopefully, well, I'm definitely going to be using it and I'm sure you will. And that's just a couple of ideas what you can use it for. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the video. You know, smash the thumbs up and all the other stuff that YouTube people say on the videos and have a great day and I'll see you on the next video.